If I were to tell you that the video that you're looking at right now is not coming off of some crazy expensive mirrorless camera like this, uh, you'd probably believe me. But what if I told you instead that it's coming off of a $150 webcam? Well, you better believe it. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Elgato Facecam Mark II. What's up my dude, your friendly neighborhood Tony here and welcome to the Spare Tech Room where I try to channel the power of hyperfixation to hopefully help you make better tech choices. Now I've been futzing around with cameras for the past few years to try to build the best possible YouTube studio that I could for myself. And although generally webcams aren't going to give you the best possible picture quality, I think we've got something special here. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk you through all of the settings on the Elgato Facecam Mark II so that way you know how it comes comes out of the box and also how to make a few tweaks to the video so that it looks as good as possible. So for now, let's jump on over to my computer. I'm going to pull up the Elgato Facecam software and then we'll walk through the settings on that so that way you can see what that looks like. Okay, so you have to excuse me if I'm looking a little bit over to the side here, but here we have the Camera Hub software. This is the first thing you're going to want to download when you hook up your new Elgato Facecam and this is going to allow you to control so much about this camera. So right now we're going to switch this back to its default setting so that way you know how it looks out of the box and then I'll show you some of the tweaks that I made to it. All right, and in order to do that, you're gonna click up here under advanced device settings and just restore factory defaults. That'll set it back to its original setting. And there we go. This is what it looks like right out of the box. Not great, but not the worst webcam I've seen. Now the Elgato Facecam Mark II is running at 1080p 60 frames per second. So it is not a 4K webcam. You need to know that right off the bat, but for the cost and for what you're getting out of it, I think 1080p is, is pretty good. This really holds up very well to a lot of the other 4K webcams that I've seen on the market. So let's go ahead and go over the settings here. So on the very left hand side of Camera Hub at the very top, you're seeing your camera tab, which has all the different camera settings. We'll go through that in just a second. You also have some effects that you can apply here. You can flip and mirror the image. You can also add different backgrounds and things like that. You also have the ability to connect this to the Elgato prompter, the teleprompter, which is awesome. This will mount right to the back of that so that you can use that for any kind of uh, scripts that you might have that you want to read off of. Or a really cool thing that you can use that teleprompter for is for video chats where you can be looking directly at the camera and see the person that you're chatting with. It basically works as an extra monitor. So this has the ability to connect through that. But back under this camera setting, that's where we're really going to go in and kind of tweak everything here. I'll also mention that, of course, you have on the right hand side your display, your preview, where you can see yourself to make sure that everything looks good or as good as it's going to look. At least in my case, I definitely should have shaved today. At the very bottom, you see your preview format. You can switch this between 1080p 60 all the way down to 540p at 30 frames per second. If your computer is maybe a bit older and you're not able to preview in the highest possible resolution, you can drop that down to help yourself out. But generally, if you're going to have a, a fairly modern computer, you should be totally fine at 1080p 60. A little bit further to the right, you've got the ability to take a snapshot, just a quick image of whatever's on screen here, and you can change which folder that saves to. Then further to the right, you have the ability to turn on and off the preview as well as the ability to show a grid so that way you can line yourself up correctly if you need to. So now we'll go back over to the left hand side of the screen here where you have all of your menu settings. Again, you have the advanced settings here, which is where you're going to go to factory reset the Elgato face cam. Also, you'll be able to see what firmware you have on here. So if you have a software update, uh, when I took mine out of the box, it immediately had a firmware update. So that might be something you need to check here. You'll be able to save your settings. So once I go through and switch everything in here, I'll be able to save it as a preset to the webcam itself. So it's not saving to my computer, it's saving to the internal memory on the webcam, which is awesome because if you ever decide to take this with you to a different computer, you're gonna have your settings already in place. So let's go down here and tweak a few things. One, you have your frame that you can set up. This is pretty cool too. You're able to zoom in on here and you can move this box around and then set different presets here. So if you want to have a preset where you just jump to a certain part of your screen, you can definitely do that. And again, you can slide the box around or you can just pan and tilt using these little buttons here to kind of um, change your, your angle. Below that, you have your picture settings, which is where your contrast, saturation, and sharpness are going to be. For me, this is super contrasty right out of the box. So that's one of the first things that I'm going to change is I'm going to drop that contrast down uh, probably to mm, something like 50, maybe 57%. Then I'm going to up the saturation a little bit because it's looking a little desaturated. We'll just bring that up to, let's take that to 55%. 
then we'll bring the sharpness up a little bit. We want to pump in a little bit of sharpness, but not too much to where it makes it look artificial. We're going to bring that up to 55% as well. So these are some decent settings that might work for you. It works for me in my particular situation that I have here. Now, the exposure is going to be different for most people, but one thing I will mention right off the bat is that their default exposure has it set to 1 over 60 for the shutter speed, which is incorrect. If you know anything about video, one of the most important things when it comes to shutter speed is that you follow the 180 rule, which basically means that your shutter speed should be double the inverse of whatever your frame rate is. I think that's probably the best way to word it. Essentially, if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be 1 over 120. So we're going to adjust that here. So we'll take it off of automatic mode and we'll change the shutter speed, which of course dims down the video a lot. And this is where you would go in and adjust the ISO in order to get it to kind of match up what you need. And we can do that here, or we could do a couple other things. There are different ways to adjust your exposure. One is of course to crank the ISO, which is fine, but it will kind of warp your video a little bit, the color and the way that it looks. So I try to keep the ISO as low as possible. Uh, we can also change the contrast, which will range the exposure a little bit. So if we want to do that, that's another option, but we'll probably just keep that about where it was before. We can also change the dynamic range here. So this camera does have HDR functionality, but I'm not a fan of HDR unless you absolutely need it in this particular situation. So you'll see when I switch to HDR mode, it does this wild looking beauty filter on my face, which I mean, hey, I'll take all the beauty I can get but this just doesn't look authentic at all. This looks very almost painted over. It's, it's not a good look at all, but if you have a very high dynamic range situation that you're shooting in, let's say for example, you have a window behind you with a lot of light coming in and it's blowing out the image, then you might wanna use something like HDR. Otherwise, highly recommend just leave it on standard. Uh, then we'll go down to white balance. The auto white balance is pretty decent on this. I like to just dial mine in exactly. So with the key light that I have here, something around 5,500 should be good. And you'll notice that it really livened up my skin a lot. Then we have noise reduction, which is going to kind of get rid of some of the fuzziness, primarily in the background or in the darker areas. Right now it's set to medium, which I think is okay. You can turn it off completely, but then you'll notice some of the noise in the background of the image is going to pop up. And then if you put it on high, it's going to kind of muddy up your image a little bit. So I just keep that on medium. I think that's a good setting here. You also have the ability to have anti-flicker in place. So if you have uh, any lights or anything that are going to be flickering in the background or in your image, then you can adjust it here. I am only being lit by my studio light, which is an Amaran 60D. So I don't really need to worry about that. What I will do though, is I might crank the exposure just a little bit on this light. So I'm going to go into my app here and just turn up the exposure a little bit to kind of help with my image. I don't want to have to change any of the ISO. So if you have the ability to control light from an external source, definitely go that route first. So we'll just turn that up just a bit to kind of, there we go, raise the exposure on my face. And that looks pretty good. So these are probably, I think, the, the ideal settings for the Elgato Face Cam Mark II. And yes, it's not going to look as good as something like the Sony camera that I have here. But for what it is, for being just a $150 webcam, this is not a bad way to start out your YouTube career or to live stream or to just have for different conference calls and things like that. I will say I currently have this hooked up to my Windows PC. I also have a Mac that I've tried to hook it up to before. However, currently on Mac, there seems to be a bit of a flickering issue with it where the image just kind of flashes here and there, which is not great if you're trying to record a YouTube video. So hopefully they work that out in the future with some kind of firmware update. I'm sure they will. But for now, it seems to be working really great in Windows. Not perfect on Mac just yet, but it is a brand new webcam that just came out. So if you want to check it out yourself, I'm going to go ahead and link to it in the description box below. It's been in and out of stock, so you may want to check that link to see if it is available right now for you. I'll also be putting up another video where I completely unbox and walk through the physical dimensions of the camera itself. So if you want to see that, I'll link to it right over here at the end of the video. So if you want to take a closer look at the webcam, go ahead and jump on into that next. Otherwise, check the link in the description box so that way you can check it out for yourself. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time in the spare tech room. Be good.